Welcome to the book studio. I'm your host, Beth Ann Patrick, and today I've got Stephen Solomon with me. He's got a new book, Water, The Epic Struggle for Wealth, Power, and Civilization. It's from Harper. Stephen, thanks so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. It's really a fascinating subject, and it's a big subject. Uh, water is covering so much of our globe, and if that, that's what I would probably say if I were Stephen Colbert here. <laughs> you know, gosh, we've got so much of it. What's the problem, Steve? Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> so, well, the problem is that, that a lot of it, uh, most of it is not fresh water to start with, right. and of the fresh water, most of it is locked away in glaciers. Or, or deep underground or falls in places that we can't uh, really get at it in the remote mm -hmm. regions. So there's really just a little bit, tiny little bit that the, uh, we use for all civilizations. And m largely that's the amount that has been recycled through the, uh, the rain and the, and the evaporation process that refills our rivers and our lakes and our shallow groundwater. Well, one of the things in your book that fascinated me that it, though is that even though our problem right now is amount of water, other civilizations and other eras have had water problems, water struggles, even when there was more fresh water to be had. So let's talk about a couple of those and why they're important to learn from. Uh, exactly. We've, I've noticed in the uh, book that the many turning points in civilization, the rise and decline of great states, right. has associated with how well they manage their water resources. Because every society has water challenges of its own time, and, and with the technologies of its time, is either able to solve them or not solve mm -hmm. them. And when they do, we've often seen great civilizations like China take off. We saw mm -hmm. uh, Rome take off. We saw the Mesopotamian, the, right. the Egyptians in the very beginning with irrigated agriculture. And what are some civilizations that suffered because they couldn't figure out how to harness water's well, power? Well, that's uh, eventually you see societies uh, even even happened in ancient Egypt as well, uh, where they, they could no longer, they either didn't get enough water because of the floods, or the, there was salinized soils like in the uh, Mesopotamia because mm -hmm. the process of irrigation brings soil uh, so salts up from the uh, soil and it ruins the crops. Right. And so either they find a way to come up with new crops or they have to move further upriver and those societies fail. The We've seen the, the, the Mayan civilization probably fell from lack of water and in the Southwest as well. Right, right. Very, very interesting. Um, and of course, one of our problems con in contemporary society is water and climate change. But there's also a lot of socioeconomic implications to lack of water. And that's something that you explore in this book. And I want to talk about those, the hot spots, if you will. Sure. And one of them is Pakistan. You, you discuss that. It's become a real problem, not just because of the density of population, but also because of climate change and glaciers and also because of access to water. So let's talk about Pakistan sure. for a moment. Pakistan's a great example. Um, what you have in Pakistan is about a population that's growing about 30 million, 30% uh, in the next uh, 15 years. And it's already a very heavily populated country and very heavily irrigated. Mm -hmm. It depends on t almost entirely on the Indus River. 50% mm -hmm. of its waters, though, come from the glaciers that are in the Himalayas. And right now, those glaciers are melting under the, under the climate change uh, mm -hmm. problems. So they're facing a, a sort of a scissor effect where population pressures are growing, and yet they're not going to have enough water to grow f the uh, crops that they're going to need uh, f to feed that population. Uh, they're a nuclear armed state. They're already in a fractious uh, political right. condition. In fact, we're f frankly, we're fighting a war in that part of the world for national security reasons based largely on, on that security. The United States uh, recently uh, pa had a package of $7.5 billion of aid that we're giving to Pakistan. Uh, the largest portion of it um, is, is targeted on rebuilding their, uh, their irrigation structures, Very their storages, and their, uh, and their hydropower dams. Well, because, of course, if access to water is cut off, there are so many other problems that can arise. And you talk about this as well. There are health problems uh, that can happen, um, societal unrest, you know, so many things. And one great example of that that we want to talk about is um, fresh water shortages in California. I should, shouldn't say it's a great example. Example. It's actually a very sad example, but California is dealing with that. Let's talk about some of the ways, the good things that California sure. is doing to keep, keep fresh water as something that everyone will have access to. Yeah. Ne necessity is the mother of invention, as right. we know, and there have been sometimes some great breakthroughs made by societies that are facing the worst situations. Crises, yeah. Crises. Uh, Australia is certainly doing that today. Mm -hmm. But in California, where we, we, we have under, in our country, which has a great deal of water relative to the rest of the world and, and a great opportunity to feed the world and, and produce many mm -hmm. of the goods that the world is going to need in the future, uh, we are doing creative things like a recycling uh, a wastewater mm -hmm. is being recycled. Some of it's being even channeled now towards uh, agricultural purposes that uh, non-potable uh, water. Right. Um, 
uh, there's uh, uh, some some very banal uh, also efficiencies going on as well as such as uh, using natural landscaping as opposed to gar right. gardening or, or low flush toilets and that kind of thing. Um, but but there are many technologies that are available today without any great new technological breakthrough mm -hmm. that can really extend the existing supplies uh, to much more productive, make more productive use of the existing supplies. Well, one of the things you say that's so simple is that in households, just flush less. Right. You know, and that doesn't seem like a, a great problem to do, but it would save a great many gallons of water each day for the average household, wouldn't it? It's the biggest user, about a third of the water in our the household. The biggest user, is, really, biggest, not showers, is, is the, not cooking. And, and the, really the sad thing is if it, just a few toilet flushes a day that we use is all the water that people in other parts of the world get for, their, for all of their needs. Uh, and because there are about a billion people on this planet mm -hmm. that uh, don't have access to enough uh, clean drinking water each day and have to walk two to three hours a day just to, to be able to get that. There's two and a half right. billion without sanitary services. And that's one of the reasons we have uh, World, World Water Day. Which and I imagine that you and Water, the book, are going to be involved in some activities. Yes, March 22nd is, is World Water Day. And it was, uh, it was passed by the, uh, after the Rio Summit, in, uh, Earth Summit mm -hmm. in 1992. And it's a little sort of like it's considered the little sister of, of Earth Day. But on right. the other hand, the Earth is three quarters water. So maybe uh, Earth Day should be uh, Yeah, maybe water they should Day. meet in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yes, yeah, so, but around the world, um, there are many uh, groups that are, that are trying to raise uh, money and, mm -hmm. and have, plan, have on the ground um, plans uh, uh, in place to be able to get water to people. I, I myself had gone over to Kenya at some point mm -hmm. and laid uh, two miles of water pipes that brought water to a waterless village for people who, from, a, from a well, from a, a borehole that had been dug uh, 30 years earlier by Egyptians. But for 30 years, people were walking all these two to three miles. It's amazing when we consider how easy it is for us to get the simple glasses of water that are on the table. And you talked about inequity before. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is one of the hidden inequities in the, on the planet. Right. Is that the that two to three hours that, the, that somebody has to pay to forage for water, because that's what's basically happening. Right. And it's happening in cities like Delhi and, and now in, in Port-au-Prince. It's been going on and as well. And it might even be happening in cities like Beijing and Shanghai. And, and China's Achilles heel is the fact that they got about uh, one fifth the water per person that we do, and a lot of it is terribly, Polluted. terribly filthy, because mm -hmm. the water quality issues are also a uh, component uh, of this. And, you know, our with the, what's happening is we are also depleting our ecosystems uh, around the world. We're drilling groundwater that can't mm -hmm. be replenished. Uh, we're, you know, going too right. deep. Um, we are overusing, if you will, the sustainable supply. And that's can work in the short run, but unless there's going to be a miracle technology, and some people like you know the desalination, uh, hope for that. Hope for that will eventually bail us out. But it, but it's not going to in yeah. the short and medium term. Well, in the short term, World Water Day is March 22nd. Is there a good website for your book or a website for World Water Day that people should go to? Uh, yeah. Well, for my book, it's called um, it's the HTTP uh, the Water Blog dot WordPress okay. dot com, and uh, there is a, a new water site going up called Water Water Day dot Org, I believe it is. Well, we'll make sure we have those up on the blog as well. Yes. And the book is Water, the Epic Struggle for Wealth, Power, and Civilization. It's by Stephen Solomon from Harper. Steve, thanks so much again for being here in the book studio. Thank you very much for having You're me. You're welcome. Join us next time on the book studio.